Now, I want you to consider the following, because we're going to look at some very special. This is, it's all about special products, but these are some super special guys I want us to consider. Okay. Consider this product right here, A plus B quantity squared. Now, I can tell you right now what this isn't. You are not allowed to square each of these pieces. Now, we had problems earlier today where you raised everything inside to that particular power, right? Mm -hmm. But remember, that was when you had a product, when it was multiplication to a power. Is this multiplication? This is addition, so rules are a little bit different here. What does it mean to square something? You multiply it times itself, so it means this guy literally is A plus B times what? A plus B, do you all agree? Well, let's go ahead and multiply this out. So it's 2A. Can't you square it? Square, or multiply this out, what do you get? A squared. I get A squared. Mm -hmm. On the outside is plus AB. You guys with me on that part? You're not with me on that? Yeah. I'm foiling. I'm multiplying mm -hmm. like I've been doing all day. What about on the inside? What do you get? B -A. You can say B A, but it's multiplication, right? And we have maintained that the order doesn't matter with multiplication, so I'm going to write A B. And then what do we get in the last part? B I get B squared. Do you all agree? Now, is there a way that I can simplify this? No. Aren't these guys like terms? I mean, they're the exact but same they're term. Together, though. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Yes. Should be, should be A, B squared? A squared plus 2AB. 2AB. Oh, M. Goodness. Now, I'm going to take you back a little bit. I want you to think about something. If I have 5X plus 3X. Oh, it's 8X. You, you, you're bringing it strong. You don't even think about it. You just know it's 8X, right? Okay. What if I say x plus x? What is that? It's 2x because this is understood to be, have coefficients of 1, right? So it's 2ab. Right. Did I do anything with the exponents when I combine like terms? Mm -mm. No. It's all about combining those coefficients. So what we have here is we still have a squared, but the stuff right here in the middle combines to give me 2ab. Are you with me on that? Plus B and then plus B squared. I'm going to let you know something. Don't, Don't what? Don't you normally put the largest exponents towards the front of the equation? What's the degree of this term? Squared. Two. What's the degree of this term? One. One and one is going to be two because you add the exponents and the variables. This is a degree of two. What's the degree of this? So these all have the same degree. They're actually ordered based on the A, the degree of the A. This has the most A, the next most, and this one doesn't have any. But I need to tell you something right now. This guy is the loneliest guy in all of the math world. He is forgotten about more often than, you know, a nerd on, you know, prom night. Sure, you can do math really well, but doesn't guarantee you have a date. No hard feelings. <laughs> but I was going to be cool. This is a shortcut, what we have right here. This is a shortcut that you need to memorize. We're going to show you how it applies in these problems. I, I like to start off with this guy right here. If I look at x plus 5 squared, now I'm, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to show you the foil behind it. Okay? But I want us to learn to do the special product. Okay? Uh, but if I do it, the behind the scenes stuff here, I think it makes it a little bit easier for you to see where everything comes from. Like, where does that 2ab come into play? How do I use that? Well, 
if I were to multiply this out using the FOIL method, multiply those first terms, what do you get? X squared, X squared. Product of the first oh. terms is X. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when that happens. You love it when my voice cracks yeah. because my throat is so dry. Yeah. Thank you. You don't care at all. <laughs> what what's still on the outside piece? Plus five X. Plus five Go to the inside. What's on the inside? Plus five X. Plus five X and then what? Plus now I want you to see what's going on here. According to my special product. My first piece right here in this, whoops, sorry, let me back it up. This first guy right here gets squared. The last guy gets squared. And do you see how that happens in my, in my work over here? Mm -hmm. Didn't x get squared to get x squared? Okay. Mm -hmm. And didn't 5 get squared to get 25? Now, we didn't say 5 squared, did we? You did 5 times 5, but isn't that the same as 5 squared? So that's plus 25. What's the middle piece of this product? But I've got a question for you. How many times do we see the 5x term? Twice. See this number right here? That's twice. You're doing twice a times b. Because didn't you do 5 times x and 5 times x? You did that twice? That's why I've got the 2ab. So what do I get in the middle? I get 10x. No, because you're combining like terms. It's just 10x. Right. Right? So. So. <laughs> now let's do another problem where we're really relying on the formula. Okay? If I take x plus 7 squared. I can make it really easy for you. Check this out. When you square the x, what do you get? x squared. Because we know that if I had written it out like this side by side, you would have to do x times x, and what are you going to have to do at the end? 7 times 7. Which is what? 49. Right. And that's the same thing as saying 7 squared, right? Mm -hmm. Now the middle piece. 14x. How'd you get 14x? Because I multiplied 7 times 2, and then I just added the x. Okay, if we had foiled it out like this, you would have 7x and 7x, right? Mm -hmm. So it's x times 7 is 7x, right? But how many times do you see 7x? And what happens if you see 7x twice? You get what? 7 plus 7, 14. 14x. But yeah, right. Like if you just multiply, then you just add the x. Right, and so this is what we'll do a lot of times. We'll actually write out what does 2ab mean. The 2 is there because... We have it twice. But what is it that you have twice? What's the A? What's the first part of my product? X. What's the second part of my product? Seven. seven. The second part of my binomial, I mean. And notice here, this is all multiplication, so does the order matter? No, so it's 2 times 7. 14, and just like Angie says, you just tack on the X. Right? Let's do another one of these. The only way you're going to get these is by doing them over and over and over again. I still like writing it out. I'm going to tell you right now, if you still like writing it out, you're going to get burned later. I'm showing you the shortcut. I'm trying to make your life a little bit easier, so I want you to learn the shortcut, because we're going to come back and talk about these shortcuts in the next chapter. If I do x minus 6 squared, I'm squaring a binomial. X squared. So you know the first piece is x squared. What's the last piece going to be? Positive. It's a negative 6, but negative 6 squared is a plus 36. 36. Do you all agree? And then the middle is going to be minus 12x. Right, the, exactly right. The middle is minus 12x. Now you may be saying, how, how do we get that? Well, again, you're thinking about this. You've got your 2ab that's part of the formula, right? 2 is going to be there because you're doubling something, right? And you're doubling the a is x 
and the b part of my binomial is negative 6. So this is really what you're doing. You're going to have x times negative 6, right? What do you get there? Negative 6. But how many times would you see that if you had done it the long way? Twice. And so that means you're going to have to double that, right? So when you double negative 6x, you get 12. negative 12x. That's the connection that we make there. But if you can write it out like this, all you have to do is figure out how, do I, how am I going to multiply this in a way that's easy for me? Because 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, and negative 12 times x is negative 12x. And you're done.